Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Midday Prayer as we are gathering up here uh, for uh, our time together here on this Monday. I'm making sure we are up and running well. Looks like we are. So um, I'm glad that you are joining with us. If you um, would place any prayers, request specific ones in the chat, that would be great. I'll try to remember to include those in our time together as we pray for those in our lives. Um, on this kind of chilly but still beautiful day that we have, um, where God has called us together in the middle of that day for prayer. Uh, so um, good to see that Mike is with us and Sharon is with us. Uh, and as others join in, let me know you're here. Uh, Pastor Mike here. We uh, will be spending this whole week together. Pastor Tamika, today's her birthday. Uh, Pastor Tamika is on vacation this week. So God bless her as she takes some much deserved time off. And yes, Sharon, happy Monday to you as well. Um, we're going to start as we center ourselves with our prayer together. So let us breathe in the breath of God and breathe out our cares and our concerns. And then breathe in the love of God and breathe out our doubts and our despairs. And breathe in the life of God breathe out our fears and our frustrations. Welcome, Lynn and Kathy. Good to see you all as well. Um, our reading today comes from Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 13 through 25. So um, listen to, to Paul's words from Romans, uh, and then we'll talk about those for just a few minutes. Uh, and um, let Paul's words kind of um, shape our time together in our day today. In, uh, in my Bible, it's this particular section of Romans is entitled God's Promise Realized Through Faith. God's Promise Realized Through Faith. Paul writes, for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there a violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall be your, your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what God had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. You know, as I read these words this morning, um, and, and I will admit, sometimes Paul's a little wordy. Um, but I, I, it, it struck me how Paul is going back into the something that um, an event that happened in the lives of those to whom he is uh, speaking uh, many, many decades before, right? Uh, he goes back to that promise made through Abraham and Sarah from God that said a couple of things. One, it said, I'm going to make you um, the father of many nations. I'm gonna, you're going to have more descendants, remember, than the stars or the grains of sand is the way it's described. 
Uh, I'm going to give you this piece of land to live in, and it will be land that will be fertile. It will be gushing with milk and honey, uh, and you will be prosperous, and your people will be prosperous. And as ridiculous as that sounded, now for us, as Paul reminds us, uh, Abraham was almost 100 years old when the promise was made, and Sarah had been barren for years and years. Um, Abraham didn't question Somehow he just believed. He just put his faith, put his trust in the promises of God. And it made me think about how we are also called to put our faith and our trust, our beliefs in this promise of God and something else that seems absolutely mind blowing and almost impossible to believe that God could. Raise Jesus from the dead. Right? It is a it is a story that we hear every year uh, in this time of Lent where we are moving towards the, re, the retelling of that story. Uh, it is a story that that um, in which we sit in awe at how that could actually be something that happens. And I, I, I am impressed that Abraham can remain faithful and that we can remain faithful. I think we do that because God reckons it to us as righteousness. In other words, God gives us the faith that we need to hold on to that promise. That we too will share in that resurrection, that we too will live in the presence of God forever that we'll be joined with all those who have gone before us and live into that place of love and peace. It is a promise to which we cling maybe every day, but especially these last this last year. And we're beginning to see glimmers of that hope, that, that new life, that life coming out of death, right? Um, as this past Sunday, we had folks in the sanctuary for the first time in a year. We uh, did our best to Try not to get too loud and talk too loudly, but uh, we did worship God alongside of our siblings online, and uh, we'll continue to do that. So there, are, there begins, there's beginning to see some life after death. I think some resurrection hope um, that we will to come through all that we have been through this past year, uh, and for that we can say thanks be to God. So uh, our, our friends from Trinity Camp Hill. Um, just released this particular song. And I think it's, it really spoke to me around never losing the wonder of the story of Jesus. So let us hear them sing. We'll get back together and pray. Um, and God bless us this day. So here we go.
May I never lose the wonder of the cross. That is a prayer in and of itself, right? And thank God that we are given the faith to hold on to that wonder through every day of our life. Now let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we come together as your people surrounded by wonder, we first of all give you thanks for the gift of the faith that you have given us to hold fast to that truth that the cross shows us. That even as we were sinners, you loved us in such a way that you took on all that separated us from you and erased it and promised us that just as Jesus was raised from the dead, we too will live a new life. We ask that that hope be something that sustains us in this week ahead of us, as this, on this Monday we're getting started. Um, we pray, God, that uh, we are able to live in that hope and to share that beautiful message just as, as beautifully as our folks from Camp Hill just did. We pray, God, too, for those on our prayer list, those in our lives that uh, need to feel your healing touch, need to know that they are continue to be loved by you and, and maybe need to be reminded of the wonder that uh, that cross gives us. So today we pray for Karen and Blair Alban, Inette, Sean, Anara, Jacob Hawk, Marjorie Long, Kathy, Noah Hall, Margaret Fulkemer, Shelley McLaughlin, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fails, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Kim Brady, Carol Brzezinski, Betty Crandall, Connie Koss, Charles McCarty, Susan Bethke, McKenna Day, Esther Merson, Barbara Dareth, Debbie Moss, Jane Cox, Kirsten, Beth Webb, Lauren Mueller, Ruth Gossner, Kathy Miller, and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time, Ralph, Artie, Pastor Kelly, Ryan. Bring healing into their lives. We are so thankful for those who care for them, for those doctors and nurses that uh, have worked on the front lines their whole lives, it seems, and are are themselves remembrances of the wonder of the cross itself. 
We pray, God, that this week will be a week where vaccinations can continue to happen, where people can continue to remain um, virus-free for those that have the virus, that, the, that they can begin to get well. Um, we also pray, God, for consolation and uh, your healing touch on the hearts of those who grieve all that they've lost, including the death of loved ones. And now, God, we join together and we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, we breathe in the breath of God. And we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehension. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace today and always. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, have a great rest of your Monday. Uh, happy birthday again, Pastor Tamika. And uh, we will see you all tomorrow uh, for midday prayer. God bless. Have a great day.